long time coming, but I'm on the way up. I'm on the way up. Hello pool players, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another lesson from the Apex Predator Billiards Training Club. My name is Apex Elenio, your aspiring professional pool player and pool instructor straight from the small island of Jamaica. Now as we continue in the series of videos that I'm putting out where we were discussing in part 1, 2 and 3 cue balls path prediction when you are actually on a pocket hanger and you need to precisely know the direction or the path that your cue ball is traveling when you want to hit a specific target on the rail now in part one we looked at heading in towards the long rail in part two we head towards the short rail in part three we actually look at coming off two cushions into a target on the long rail and now of course in part four we're going to be looking at the similar shot but we are coming in towards the full length of the table so this is going to be a really really knowledgeable video and again as usual once i'm practicing i always seem to make some sort of discovery on these drills that i do here now as you can see there i have the object balls are the target balls or the target spot specifically at a point on the rail and once again i'm placing the object ball as a pocket hanger and the cue ball is in direct line at a perpendicular distance to the potting angle so now the aim here is to visualize how the cue ball is coming off the short cushion and how i can direct the cue ball with minimal effort towards a target point now the one good thing that i like about this that i'm explaining to you here is the fact that i don't have to worry about too much of the object ball i have to hit or you know, whether i have to use this kind of spin or that kind of spin well the one aspect of the object ball or the one section of the object ball that i'm hitting is in fact a half ball hit as you can see here by the graphics being displayed on screen now from here as i said guys in the last video we discussed the understanding of symmetry and how the diamonds connect on the table now we learned in part three that you know there was a slight variance in terms of how the cue ball reacts so one thing that i did realize throughout the three parts is that though mentally i'm aiming at a half ball i have to aim a here thinner because the cue ball does pick up slight spread as it comes off the first cushion after contact with the object ball here now this video as i said was inspired by dr dave recent video that he posted on cross table positional play so i cannot take full credit for this but i did in fact use dr dave's knowledge and extend it towards improving the consistency of my game there now on that first attempt and here's the replay i did in fact hit approximately half ball but the error that i actually made and it doesn't look like an error because of course my target is actually supposed to be hitting the cluster which i did so you know to some extent i was successful but once it is that the object ball is in the corner pocket or it's hanging like where i've just placed it and the cue ball is in direct line once you hit at a half ball or a here thinner than a half ball then you will find that the trajectory of the cue ball does head towards the side pocket so hence why i have my target point here the two and the three as a cluster it could be a game situation where i have the one ball here and of course the two ball is the next shot or i could be playing so it could be any situation where i have to hit into that cluster so if i can specifically if i can precisely hit the object ball at a here thinner than a half ball then you will find that you get consistent results like this there beautiful shot let's have a look at the replay here nice cue delivery you know stable stance no ex excessive body movement no twist in the arm so definitely it was a precise hit on the cue ball a precise hit on the object ball and the right amount of quantified spin was applied now i did make an actual error in terms of the amount of spin that i use and in a second i'm going to share what i had discovered now 
the one ball is not my target for those who think that i'm actually going after this again the one ball is not my target i just placed the one ball there as a marker to say guys once you want to make contact with the one ball you have to have a rolling cue ball at a here thinner than a half ball hit so my next target here is in fact the four ball that is tied up with the five you can see i'm pointing at it now once again i'm going to be aiming the object ball or the cue ball at a half ball contact with the object ball that is in the corner and with approximately half tip of spin my prediction was that i was going to hit it half tip of spin should take me a diamond longer and on the long reel on the short reel uh uh, one tip of spin will take me a diamond longer so that was kind of like what i kind of miscalculated here i kind of felt it was the same because as i said this is something that i'm currently processing in my game it's knowledge that i really came up on and so the quantified amount of spin varies depending on the angle of the pot here so now i now realize that from this angle i will actually need one tip of spin to get the cue ball to travel one diamond from the natural rolling cue ball remember that once you're rolling the cue ball on the once you're hitting the cue ball on the vertical axis at a half ball or here thinner than a half ball then it should head to the side pocket so one diamond up will require one tip of spin has been displayed by the graphics that you're seeing on screen so if i aim my tip here at one o'clock and i stroke this cue ball smooth with the right quantified speed i should get a result like that there now that particular one there i did apply just a here too much spin and you can see that i actually broke out the cluster from behind so again this is also something that you can actually add to your game because you would have heard many instructors that discuss how to break out clusters on the table uh they'll tell you that you have to have knowledge of how to break out the cluster you can break out the cluster by hitting the face or you can head directly into the cluster or you can break out the cluster from behind so this is important knowledge that you guys are seeing here now moving up again by another diamond here i'm going to be aiming at two o'clock spin here and it should get me good results during that example let's have a look at the replay here aiming at two o'clock spin notice how the cue ball hit it hit it actually hit exactly towards the diamond now my cue ball is a little bit wild and bear in mind that this particular drill is not focused on breaking out cluster and getting position it's just pretty much having an understanding of the quantified amount of spin speed in order to get the cue ball to hit a specific point on the rail so even though my cue ball was a little bit wild there i did in fact give myself a point just for getting the cue ball to head in that specific direction now throughout all my videos in fact throughout all every one of my videos that i do post i always encourage you guys that if you're going to engage in this drill you've got to test for consistency now for the purpose of the video i want to do this at least twice but when you're in your practice session and you want to work on a specific shot you want to give yourself a target let's say five in a row or three in a row or you just want to make contact and become consistent there really really nice delivery there that one broke the cluster out from behind and again depending on what your objective is after the pot do you need to separate the cluster do you do you need to just bump into the cluster or do you just need to hit a certain side of the cluster this knowledge can supercharge your game in your position play in your breakout it can supercharge your game just in so many ways even your safety game you can use this as an element to play safety let's say you want to pocket an object ball and hide behind a specific cluster this can also add to your game here now this particular one that you're gonna see me demonstrate here is a really really touchy shot and I said, this is an example of what you see here this is an example where i actually use a here well i actually did not use enough spin and i did not have enough draw so if you look at my facial expression there you can see that i just recognize that you know based on the quantified value first diamond above the side pocket requires one tip 
the second diamond above the side pocket requires two tip so my guesstimation was that i needed three tips but in fact because of the angle because of how close the cue ball or because of how quickly the cue ball is going to contact the rail i actually need a hear more draw so i'm going to be aiming at four o'clock now many times well not many times a few times you would have seen where i actually you know sometimes some unbelievable things can happen because there i barely missed the cluster and you can see the facial expression there i was pretty surprised you would have seen also something that happened in part three where i went exactly between a zone and it, you know if you try to replicate shots like these it usually doesn't work out in your favor but that one was very surprising there again for in order for me to be successful with the shot i have to aim with a here more draw and maybe a slight bit more spin now you have to be very careful with this kind of shot when you have to break up because a very touchy shot it's a shot that sometimes when you get down the perspective that you're looking at is that you end up putting a bit more draw than than what is required and you end up drawing into the corner pocket while sometimes you can draw directly into the object or the cluster and it ricochets off the cluster and scratches so it's a very very touchy shot that requires you to have a really good sense of the speed and the spin and the kind of stroke you need to really get the consistency you need so it's something that you have to be be aware of you don't want to aim too low on the cue ball and you don't want to use too much spin so you have to have very good tip position to execute with consistency there but so far two from three there that is not too bad really really good demonstration there of understanding the cue balls part here now we're going to be diving into the latter phase of this video now where sometimes when you're trying to go after a specific target you may not have a reference point of aiming now the first part of this video is where i had the cluster directly on the diamond but then what happens if it's not at the diamond what you're going to find is that a lot of players will adjust they'll have an idea based on experience but what they'll do is that they often tend to adjust for the the target by using excessive speed or excessive spin and they will you what you will find when you try to experiment by just using that you'll find that you often get very close to your target or you go very wide from your target now so in order for me to hit into the 5-6 cluster here, I actually need a half tip of spin that is anywhere between 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock. And of course, you need the right speed as well because we did spoke about speed being an important variable in these kinds of shots. Remember, if you play the cue ball a bit too hard, it definitely will cause more deflection and it will cause the object ball to slide along the tangent line of the pot. Of the potting angle a bit more which definitely gives you far more than what you desire so you want to have at least a four to five speed for this particular shot here you need about a four speed all the other shots before requires about a four and a half to about a five speed here and you can see i am hitting my target precisely where i want to so now i have the confidence going forward i've had the confidence before inspired by dr dave a uh, recent video that he posted two months ago but now i have even more confidence that no matter where my cluster is on the side rail i am going to be able to know where uh how much of the cue ball my tip position and funny enough here and uh, well valuable enough here i in fact know that i'm always hitting the object ball at a half ball here again really nice attempt there heading towards the uh the i'm heading towards a target that is between the first and the second diamond on the long rail this in fact requires one and a half tip of spin that is anywhere between one and two o'clock as been indicated by the graphics on screen here so once you can hit it at that point you should get consistent result now i've heard comments about a lot of players not understanding you know the clock values of the tip position this is super useful 
because once you know how much tip position you need to apply then you will increase your consistency now an example of that there where i missed that shot completely obviously i did not use the amount of spin again that could be a case where i could have rushed the shot or once again as i said it's just in that particular example it's just a case where i did not apply one and a half tip that could be just maybe a one tip of spin but once you hit it precisely where you're aiming you will find that you get very very consistent result now as we're coming to the end of the video we're going to be extending this to another aspect of position play you're going to see that video in fact i will leave a link to a practice session that i had on what's coming up next on the channel but for now we're going to be working on just getting the consistency that we need now you can see there again i'm heading in between the second diamond and the first diamond below the corner pocket here and this requires in fact three o'clock spin now the quantified calculation is that maybe i need about two and a half and that is why i in fact missed that part going long so i actually need three o'clock spin with a here more draw there now i in fact use a bit too much spin i did in fact make contact with the cluster and i pretty much kind of somewhat got position if it was an actual game or a real game but what i want to specifically do is that once i have a target in mind i want to know my tip position and i want to know and have a good feel of the speed required to make that breakout so that was really really beautiful and if it was a real game you can see how nicely i landed there on the one ball given that situation all right so i hope you guys enjoyed this particular video and if you haven't checked out part one two and three ah uh, you are going to love it it's a build up to this so definitely check that video out guys and you will have a lot more understanding of what was just demonstrated there on screen all right so until next time guys i'll see you in the next video continue practicing with precision accuracy consistency and control and until next time this is apex and you're signing out peace and keep on improving until then take care bye bye